I remember uh, they were gone, and, and so I, you know, 13, I was like, fuck it, man, let's hang out. Me and Belko's hanging out in the house. I had the run of the house watching whatever we wanted to watch and shit. And I remember, um, like, it was, we, call it, we, were, we called it our bachelor, bachelor day or something. What do we call it? We were bachelors. We were just kept referring to ourselves as bachelors. And this is, this is vaguely fairly gay. We were <laughs> wearing robes, bathrobes, no clothes under the bathrobes. Isn't that fucking queer? That's so like, that's that's really like. I don't one. have that day. No, I, and I haven't had it since. I, and I'm so not the dude. I never walk around fucking naked. And, and do you, do you recall as to who was just like, who? I think it was my idea. I think I was the guy that was like, "Fuck it, let's wear robes and shit." And I don't know how it got to let's not wear clothes under our robes, <laughs> but we wear. It's, it's so weird. Like, I got mad. At it. It. I was like, "Why you got clothes under your robes?" Yeah, what? Take that. Take those panty balloons <laughs> off, dude. Fucking let it ride. Bachelors are. It Dude, is, it's so rope. strange now that I think about it. Um, but I do remember, like, there we were just... Uh, it gets even gayer, <laughs> sir. Like, thank God a, a woman comes into the mix at one point. Otherwise, it would be a completely homoerotic fucking situation. Um, Jessica Kellett came over at one point. This girl that I would go with from time to time. First chick that I got to second and third base with when I was about 12. Nice. Um, and she, she had fucking nice tits. She was the first chick who gave me a hand job. Which was the first Magic. time I came with somebody other than myself, and I'd only discovered masturbation maybe a year prior. I, I used to uh, shoplift magazines and comic books from a store called Katz's in Highlands when I was a kid, because um, hey, we didn't have any loot and shit, so I couldn't just buy shit. And I couldn't. I'd go to my parents, "Hey, can you buy me some comic books?" They'd be like, "You're crazy. It's a waste of money." So I used to like put them away on uh, like hide them. You know, they had a comic rack. Hey, hey kids, comics, those spinner racks. Yeah, yeah. And I would take the comics and hide them under like they had a little, very small store, kind of like a convenience store, but it also had a, a um, counter where you could sit and get like pork roll, egg and cheese and shit like that. Yeah. Magazine smoke, shit like that. Always fucking smelled like smoke. So I used to hide comics. I'd pull all the comics that I wanted. And I hid them under these uh, folders, school folders you could buy, and like hid them under there. And then I would let it accumulate, and then I'd come back with an empty satchel, like a backpack or something like that. And it was kind of away from the view of the counter, so then I would just kind of slip the books into my bag and then fucking buy something Good cheap shit. like gum and motor out of there. So after doing comics for a while, I was like, I'm going to start stealing fucking porn and shit, because I was getting interested in, in broads, naked broads, and um, who weren't my mother. Because I'd seen her naked a lot, as we've spoken about in the past. So um, I started stealing, like, Hustler and fucking shit like that, Cherry. Never Playboy, because Playboy was kind of arty. I wanted some yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. pussy lips. <clears throat> so there was this one um, Hustler where they had a... It was a penthouse, actually. And in the letters column, there was this guy talking about uh, driving around with this chick, and, and she spit in her hand. She pulled his dick out, and she spit in her hand, and she was rubbing it into the top of... Uh, his cock while they were driving and he was talking about how fucking phenomenal felt and they busted a nut. So I was like, well, that sounds hot, but, <laughs> <laughs> but there were no chick. I couldn't get a chick, you know, age 11 to fucking spit in her hand and rubbing it in my dick. So I did it myself. That was the first time I did it. And I, and it felt, you know, obviously fucking phenomenal. That was good. It was like, this feels all right. And shit like <laughs> so that. you ran your own penthouse letter. That was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, never mind a car <laughs> yeah, and a and chick. A girl. <laughs> yeah. I fucking guess what? I never thought this would happen to me, but so I, so, and, and eventually I must have come like not maybe that first session. Cause I didn't, I didn't, and I mean now 11 year olds, man, it's like, you know, I mean, shit, you know, shit by the age of nine at this point, I yeah, assume yeah. like how, how the body works and whatnot, but circa 1979, no, that'd be nine years old or circa 81. I wasn't really like. Sexually, you know that there, no. was like a, there was a conclusion there was a period yeah like i sense. knew there was sex but i didn't know what it did and, and yeah. blah 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 so yeah from rubbing spitting in my hand rubbing in the tip of my dick um i eventually must have come then i started taking a lot of showers you know i was one of those cats that like oh i take one bath a week or something like that because i was a kid that they don't do that anymore too now kids fucking shower all the time but I was, then I started taking showers. I remember my mother mentioning something about, it. you take a lot of showers lately. I'm like, well, you got to stay clean. But I would go in there and fucking, you know, jerk off. So Jessica Kellett, um, she was a uh, girl. So back to three men. <laughs> yeah, back to three men. Ropes. To the fucking gay, erotic fucking uh, <laughs> uh, nincompoops strolling around in fucking robes with their cocks out. 
<laughs> they were closed though. We had our rooms <laughs> closed. They weren't wide open. Um, but still weird. <laughs> so Jessica Kellett, who was the first girl that gave me a hand job, and I remember she gave it to me in my house, <clears throat> in my bedroom, and and I don't think my parents were home. I think they were out shopping or something like that because they never would have let me fucking be alone in my room with a girl or a guy for that matter. You know, they were just you didn't do that. You never closed doors in our house. You gotcha. left the doors open. Um, so she's there, and, and, and I was, I, you know, been to second base with her, and I've been to third base with her. And by that point, like, I'd, I'd bought myself at a, a state sale an old gynecology textbook um, mm-hmm. for a, a, a medical textbook. Yeah. And I fucking read it from cover to cover, learned everything I could learn about the pussy. So I knew what I was doing and whatnot, and I can get her off. So she was just like, at one point she said this, literally said this. She said, I feel so s- selfish. You're always doing something for me. What can I do for you? Which is shit. You don't you don't yeah, say yeah. that unless, you know, you, that's an invitation and a half. And I was like, well, there is this thing you could do. And so she started, and I'd moved, you know, in masturbatory technique, I'd moved from the spit in the hand and rubbing at the cock top to just jerking off, figured out yeah, what yeah. the jerking off thing was. So I, I taught her how to give me a hand job. And she was doing it for a while. You know, uh, what seemed like an eternity, but it was really just a couple minutes. And I remember she was very clearly laying next to me on the bed. I'm laying on my back. She got my dick in her hand. She's laying on her side with her head on her hand in that board kind of way, jerking me off. And at maybe four minutes into it, maybe five. I can't imagine lasting that long at that age, but it was all kind of new because... As exciting as something is, when it was, it was exciting as something could be when it's new and you want to blow a nut like that. At the same time, it was like, oh, this is fucked up. Somebody's got their hand on my dick and she's seeing me fucking without my pants on, blah, blah, blah. But she, she said, and this is a quote, um, I don't get it. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? You know, and that kind of breaks your concentration, yeah, yeah. You know, your train of thought. And the train of thought at that point was like, I want to come, I want to come, I want somebody else to make me come. And then uh, she goes, what's supposed to happen? And I was like, just wait, hold on. <laughs> and, um, and then the, our other quote that I will take with me in my grave is I finally fucking came and my eyes are closed and I'm in fucking paradise and shit yeah. like that. Oh, just totally. And she's like, ew. That was the thing. And I opened my eyes and she was fucking, she had come all over her hands and shit it was on me and she's wiping it on my bed. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> So, so Jessica was a girl I would go with from time to time, and uh, she was over the house. She, I, we called, me and Mike called her over to the house, and uh, her and I wound up going to my parents' bedroom, which was so fucking taboo, and fooling around in my parents' bed, and then she left. And meanwhile, Mike was watching TV or something. I'm sure Mike was like, well, fucking thanks. Yeah, for thanks. Biting the shit coat. You asked me to take my clothes <laughs> off, put on a robe, and then you get busy with some broad. And then, so when Jessica left... Me and Bellicose, like, it was just a day of wild abandon for me. Like, some kids really rebel and do drugs and fucking get drunk and shit like that. <laughs> put I on was a just, robe. <laughs> <laughs> put on a goddamn robe with no fucking underwear on. And um, so me and Bellicose wind up having, like, this fucking uh, battle, like a fight, where we had flashlights. <laughs> I'm telling you, it gets gayer and gayer, sir. You put this to a fucking wow chicka wow wow soundtrack, and it's just gay porn. <laughs> Um, we're, we're in our robes and, and, um, in my parents' bedroom, again, massive fucking taboo. And my parents weren't supposed to be home, I think until like one in the morning or something. So, and we're having this fucking fight where we'd have the, the lights were turned off and we each had a flashlight and we were, fu- had pillows. It just doesn't get gayer than this. And, and then my brother winds up being the gay one. That's what's strange. <laughs> um, and so, you know, tr- moving around in this pitch black and then trying to find a position and shit like that. And then you turn the light on and you start beating the shit out of the other person. The room is a fucking wreck. Mattress is tossed and fucking shit like that. And the shit knocked off their dressers. And that was their fucking sanctum sanctorum. Yeah, yeah. And that was like the fucking fortress of solitude. They didn't barely let us kids into their fucking bedroom. So my parents wind up coming home fucking early. And I hear the door and shit. And their room's still all messed up. And they come in. And there's me and bellicose and fucking robes. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom's just like staring at me and my dad, cold, hard stare. And they're like, he's Michael's got to go now. And so I was like, later on, man. And he left and they fucking tore into me and shit like that. And the old man fucking flipped out and was just like, what the, f-? he didn't curse. I don't remember him saying, fuck. what the hell were you doing? What are you doing in our room? And I remember he kicked me at one point. And that was like the last time, like 
you know, because I guess he couldn't really spank me at age. I would think yeah, I was yeah. 12, 13 at that point. Couldn't really spank me then. But he fucking kicked me really fucking hard. And in retrospect, I mean, the biggest crime, of course, was being in the room where, when I shouldn't have been there. Like, yeah, yeah. That was their, that was fucking. You could have had the gay pillow fight in your room. Why didn't I do that? And that's probably why they were pissed. They were just like, we come home, our bed is tossed and looks like someone's been fucking in it. And you dudes are hanging out in robes. Like, I probably got kicked because my parents were like, what are you, gay or something? <laughs> um, but well, that was that was the last time I got fucking smacked by my old man. Do you remember, like, when he was like, Mike needs to go home now? <laughs> Mike's like, I don't have any clothes on. <laughs> I'm sure Bellicose was like, finally, I get to put my clothes back on. I don't know why he fucking went with it, man. That's He's a weird like, thing. He's like, thank God your son is really gay. <laughs> yeah, get me out of this gay house of horror. <laughs>